Good morning everyone and welcome to the webinar on how to prepare yourself, how to get ready for that question and answer session. One of the things I notice with speakers, trainers, presenters is that they deliver really good content, they're very confident, they're credible and they're having great impact on the audience. Then at some stage in their seminar or their workshop or presentation they go into the question and answer session and they struggle with the questions, they struggle with the answers and all of a sudden this wonderful presentation is taken down a notch because of poor ability to respond to the audience's questions and what happens is your credibility as seen by the audience, as seen by everyone is gradually going down as you struggle, as you tread water, as you fumble for the answers to that difficult or left field question. So one of the skills of being effective presenters, trainers and public speakers is running a really good Q&A session. So this is going to help you prepare for your Q&A session. So welcome, a few more people just joined on, we've only just got started. Webinars, most of you know how to use webinars but just in case please ask questions at any time. Don't wait for me to pause for questions, uh, put your hand up or type in the dialogue box. If you put your hand up I will open up your microphone and you can ask the question and everyone will hear. Take notes and more importantly just apply the knowledge to your own situation. Think back to a previous, uh, think back to a recent previous presentation, what could have you done differently, what could have you done to improve your Q&A part of that session as a result of what you learned today or maybe thinking forward to your next presentation you've got coming around the corner, what can you incorporate to make that more effective in terms of your question and answer session. So it's about applying the knowledge that you learned from this short webinar. So the agenda, brief introduction which I've just been through, some general tips, I'm going to teach you a concept called the bucket model and some skills to do, what if you don't know the answer, what if you don't know. So first of all introduction, a little bit about myself, most of you know me, I'm a public speaking trainer and coach, my passion is helping people take their presentation skills, their confidence, their effectiveness just to the next level and my view is there's nothing worse than having ideas, stories or passions to share with your communities, with the people that need to hear your message and not being able to share that through lack of confidence, maybe nerves, maybe lack of effectiveness, so that's my passion. Some general tips, first of all there's two key secrets to responding to questions. The first one's around preparation and the second one's around structure. So today in this half hour webinar I'm going to talk about the preparation. I'm not going to talk about a structure for responding to questions, that's a different webinar, uh, that's a different topic that I can cover later on. Today is about your preparation. So some general tips to get ready for your questions. The first tip is do your preparation. By doing your preparation I mean know your audience and one of the things I always say is walk in your audience's footsteps. There's that native North American Indian saying, you need to walk 30 moons in your enemy's moccasins before you truly understand your enemy. You need to walk in your audience's footsteps before you truly understand them. So your preparation should be around who's in the audience, who's going to be there, what's the demographics, why are they likely to be in the audience, what information do they want for you. Your preparation should be maybe scanning the media or the newspapers if there's some topics that you're speaking on which are controversial, which are in the current media and know your research if you're speaking in a medical or a scientific field. So do as much preparation as you can in terms of what questions might I be asked, what's on the radar around the community at the moment, what are these people's expectations, what do they want from me, 
what issues are they going to bring to this seminar or this workshop and doing your preparation around that. So the more preparation you do around your Q&A, the easier and the more effective you can be and the less likely you are to be stumped or struggle or caught out and hence your credibility and your confidence takes a dive when that difficult question comes. So that's preparation. That's the first general tip. The second tip is at the start of your presentation, at the start of your workshop, at the start of your keynote speech, set the rules up front. How and when will you deal with questions? If you're speaking for 20 minutes, a fairly reasonable way, a reasonable rule would be to say, look, I'm only here for 20 minutes, so what I want to do is I'm going to speak for 10 minutes, then I'm going to save questions for about five minutes, so please hold your questions to the end. Okay, please hold all your questions to the end. My rules for today was at any time, please type in a comment or ask your question. And that's good because I can take it on the screen and deal with it as I need to. If you've got a 20 minute presentation and you allow people to ask questions as you go, you may not cover your content. If you don't set that rule and you say to someone who asks a question, oh, do you mind holding your question to the end, that seems disrespectful and that may seem evasive. Another rule, let's say you are speaking on a contentious issue and you've got lots of people in the room and you've still got limited time. Another rule might be, can I make a rule today and can I get agreement that each person on this webinar only asks one question? Each, per each person in this seminar just asks one question only, please, because I've got lots of people, lots of questions and I want to give everyone an opportunity. If you have a second question, please come and see me at the morning tea break and I'll be happy to talk to you or send me an email and I will get back to you. So that way if you do have someone who keeps asking, keeps coming back with question after question after question, you can now say, look, if you don't mind, we did all agree up front, just one question per person. Please come and see me after the seminar. I want to give everyone else lots of opportunities. So these are the rules of how you're going to deal with questions. If I say midway through a seminar, look, you've already asked too many questions, so I'm not going to take any more questions from you. Once again, I look evasive, I look disrespectful. So how do you want to handle your question and answer session? When do you want them? Are you going to take questions as you go? Are you going to delay the questions to the end? Are you going to allow people to hog the Q&A session or are you going to put an agreed limit on one question per person or two questions per person so that I can give as many people an opportunity as possible? If you do limit the number of questions, please you must answer the question of the individual genuinely. Don't dismiss the question and do a, a like a brush off answer and then when they come back for the second question, say, look, you've already asked a question, because the audience will see that you've really brushed that person off. You haven't genuinely and honestly addressed the question that they asked. And what happens if you avoid that question by saying, look, no more questions from you, someone else will pick up that same line of questioning. So you must genuinely answer the question, and the reason this person's coming back for a second bite, a second question, is clearly they are a heckler or they do not wish to comply with the rules that the group has agreed. So get buy-in. Can we all agree up front, just one question per person, put your hand up, get a show of hands, good, good, because I've got a lot to cover and I want to give as many people an opportunity. Set the scope of your question and answer session. So what I mean by that is this is what I'm here to talk about. I'm here today to talk to you about setting the rules and preparing your self for Q&A session. I'm not here to talk about a structure for responding to questions and I have a wonderful structure that I teach in my workshops of how a model for responding to questions. I'm not here to talk about that today. 
So I'm here to talk about the new the new policy that we're going to roll out, and I'm going to talk about the the operational guidelines and the implementation that's going to go around this new policy. I'm not going to talk about the budget or the financial implications of this policy. If you have any questions around your budget or financial implications, you need to speak to finance. Okay, good, let's get started. So now when someone says, but my budget's already really tight, how am I going to manage to fund this new policy? You can now say, look, as I mentioned in my introduction, I'm not going to, I'm not able to comment on any financial or budget constraints. Now, if I haven't set that scope and someone asks that question about, but this is going to impact on my budget, and my response is now, look, I'm not going to talk about budget or financial impact. You need to speak to the Director of Finance. I now look evasive because I've just made it up that I don't want to talk about this topic or this angle. So set the scope of what you will and what you will not talk about up front. And that way you can handle left field, unrelated, off-topic questions. Look, I did mention I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just going to pause for a moment. Any questions at this stage? Clear as a bell, clear as mud. Okay, moving on. Anticipate tricky questions. So this is about preparation, getting in your audience's boots, getting in your audience's footsteps, scanning what the audience wants, and then ask yourself these two questions. What question do you not wish to be asked? And what question, if you were to be asked it, would make you sweat, would make you squirm in your boots? and prepare an answer for both of those questions. It's about scanning the environment and anticipating tricky, left field, difficult questions and having prepared responses. If it's out of scope, you've already set the scope, then that's fine. If it's a tricky question and it is within scope, then you really need to answer it or you need to find out. Make sure you know your topic. Once again, this is part of your preparation, but have breadth and depth of topic. So adjacent topics, related topics. Know the past and the future. So know some of the history of how this policy arrived or why we're at this particular situation. Also know some of the future, some of the future trends, some of the future directions. So this is about knowing your topic inside out. And once again, we do specialise, so you may be a specialist in cars, but you may be a specialist in Ford cars. So if someone asks you about a Holden car, then it's outside of your scope. Build your bank of frequently asked questions. So you know those questions you get all the time and develop nice answers for them. And have these questions at your fingertips. What four or five questions, if you've answered them, covers 80 to 90% of what people want to know about your topic? Uh, how to build an environmentally friendly house. How to retire and not worry about surviving on the old age pension. So how to build enough wealth to survive as a self-retired, self-funded retiree. What four or five questions or six questions, if you can answer those, cover 90% of what people want to know. And so build that library or that bank of frequently asked questions. Don't end with questions. So this is the rule of recency. People remember the most recent discussion. So if you end with questions, for example, so that's the end of my topic, that's the end of my webinar, are there any last questions? Because the last question could be contentious, could be off track, could be difficult, and you could struggle in answering that question. And what happens is that recent conversation that you didn't handle very well, trying to respond to that difficult question, unintentionally becomes your takeaway message.
So remember I said if you're speaking for 20 minutes, set the rules up front. Look, I'm here to speak for 10 minutes, then I'm going to allow five minutes for questions and then I'm going to allow two to three minutes to sum up. If you have an MC or a chairman who is running your event and says, OK, I'll take questions at the last five minutes, make sure you tell the MC that you're going to do 10 minutes or maybe 12 minutes. You're going to do five minutes questions, then you want the microphone back for the last two minutes. Because the last question, if it's left field or you struggle with it or it's a little bit off topic and you don't do a good job, people are going to think, wow, Peter doesn't know his topic as well as I thought he did and your credibility goes down a little bit. So struggle with the question, okay, good, I'm going to end questions there. Now what I want you to do is go into your take home message. Don't make it up. So if you don't know, don't make it up. Honesty is always the best policy. And also people can check on their smartphones or their, their iPads. They can Google. If you pull up some statistics or you say 80% of people do this and someone Googles it and another credible source says, well, no, only 60% of this. Across Australia, people with mental ill health, is it going to be one in four Australians will suffer mental ill health at some stage or is it one in five? I've heard both numbers and I'm not quite sure. So is it 20% of the population or 25% of the population will be affected by mental ill health directly themselves at some stage? I'm not quite sure. So make sure you're aware of your data. Be honest if you don't know and don't make it up, don't make it up. Get back to them. So if you don't know, don't make it up. I think the secret to being a good presenter, a good leader, a good facilitator is not knowing everything but rather knowing how and where to find the answers and get back to the whole audience. Are you aware that our politicians take questions on notice. So in Parliament, if one of the members asks the Minister for Health or the Minister for Transport a particular question, for example, can you tell us how many millions of dollars have been spent on external consultants over the last five years? The Minister says that's a really good question. I'll take that on notice and the Minister has 72 hours to get back to Parliament to answer that question. So it's not about knowing everything. My background is medical science and I often used to, and I worked in pathology labs for 20 and 30 years. Um, a large amount of that was in the bush and in the bush the GPs, the doctors would rely on me so much. So I'd give them a set of abnormal pathology results. Maybe your white cells are really high or your haemoglobin's low or your iron's low and the doc, the GP will ring me up and say, Peter, these results are a little bit funny. What do you think the possible diagnosis could be and what do you suggest as further tests? And I will say, look, let me get back to you. And if it's a biochemical problem, then I would ring my friend who's a biochemist at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. If it's a blood problem, haematology, I would ring my haematologist friend in uh, Royal Perth, they'd tell me what possible diagnoses are and they'd recommend further tests, I'd ring the GP and he'd think I was really clever. I wasn't that clever, I knew where to get the answers, I was prompt and I got back to him. Now when you're presenting, make sure you get back to the whole audience. So let's say, Tara, you asked me a really fantastic question around Q&A and I say that's a really good question, I don't have the answer on my fingertips, let me find out and I'll email you the answer Tara. How do the rest of you on the webinar feel that Tara is going to get the answer to this wonderful question and you are going to miss out? So Tara that's a really good question and I'm sure most, most of you want to know, let me find out and I'll get back to all of you who, who have registered for this webinar. 
So if you're running a workshop, you've probably got everybody's emails, then get back to everyone. If you're speaking at a conference, get back to the conference organiser, the conference convener, the CEO, get back with the question and get back with the answer and get them to distribute to everyone. Or let's say you don't have that ability, this is what I would do, that's a really good question, I'm going to find out and I'll post that question on my website and the answer to the question on my website, on my homepage, and I'm going to leave it up there for two weeks. Anyone that wants to know the answer to Tara's question, just go to my website, www.peterdew.com.au, go on the homepage and I'll have Tara's question and I'll put the answer there. Get back to everyone. So summing those general tips up, do your preparation, set the rules up front, make the scope clear. This is what I'm here to talk about. I'm not going to talk about this. Anticipate those tricky left field contentious questions. Know your topic, breadth and depth, past and future. And build those questions and don't make it up. And when, when you do get this question and you get back to them, you need to add it to your bank of questions wherever that slide's gone. So now, Tara asked a really good question, which I didn't know the answer, I need to add that to my frequently asked questions, or my bank of questions. So don't end with questions, don't make it up, do your preparation. Just pause for a moment, if there's any questions, please type in. And I'm going to, while I'm waiting for any questions, I'll talk to you a little bit about the bucket model. The bucket model comes from Henry Kissinger, uh, previous Secretary of State with the United States of America. And this was Henry Kissinger's philosophy. He would have a group of buckets, and they might be frequently asked questions, but each bucket had a theme. And he would do an eloquently prepared answer for each of the different themes. One theme might be about cost, but isn't building a environmentally friendly house going to be really expensive? Isn't it going to blow my budget? How can anyone afford this? All of these different ways are coming down to price. The next question might be about quality. So if you build with these environmental products, what's the lifespan of the house? Is it going to last as long? Won't they be more prone to white ants? Less longevity of, of, of the building infrastructure, of the building superstructure. So this comes down to quality. And what Henry Kissinger used to say is, what questions do you have for my answers? And as he heard the question, he would come back. He, he would listen for the question and he would get the crux of the theme, price, quality, return on investment, key performance indicators, marketing, how do you market this? This is a marketing question. This is something to do with ethics, human rights. So this would come from the ethics bucket and he'd be able to bring that answer out and then mould it scripted eloquent answer and mould it to 20 questions that come back to the crux of the question in that bucket, the theme within that bucket. And every now and then, when you get a new question, a genuine, authentic question within scope, and it may be new trending into the future, then add a new bucket to your bucket model. So what do you do if <laughs> your bucket leaks? What do you do if you don't know? It's a good question, it's within scope. You haven't been asked this question before, what do you do? So here's some things to help you deal with questions that you don't know. Simply, don't bluff it or make it up. As I said, they may go to Google, they may have their iPad or their iPhone or their Android phone with you. Agree to find out. So it's these sources of people, my biochemist friend, my hematologist, my hematological friend, my microbiological friend, ask a colleague in the audience. Look, it just so happens that there is someone else within the audience that's also an expert or who's also built an environmental friendly home. 
Bill, do you know anything about the life expectancy of you know the structure of this home versus a conventionally built home? So this is kind of phone a friend, but someone who knows within the audience, or you can ask anyone in the audience. So that's a really good question. I haven't read that journal article. I haven't seen that article in the newspaper. Has anyone else heard of this device? Has anyone heard of this policy? Has anyone else read this journal article? The question may be out of scope, in which case you can say, look, I did mention I'm not going to speak on this topic. Or finally, once again, find out and get back to them. But as I said, get back to everyone in the audience, not just the asker of the question, because you've created interest in the whole audience and the whole audience wishes to know. So these are some of the steps, these are some of the solutions if you don't know the question, if you don't know the answer to the question. It is not a crime to not know the answer to the question. It is a crime to be caught out twice. So what do you do if you don't know? You do any one of these steps and then you build it into your frequently asked questions or you build a new bucket around your bucket model so the next time you're asked this question, you've now increased your capacity. Now one of the things I also talk about is sharing that capacity. If you work within a team and you get asked a question that's valid and you don't have the answer, yes, do find out and get back to them, but then share that new question with everyone in your team so that you've not only built your internal capacity around that new question, but you've built the capacity of your team, your organization, so that no one else gets caught out. Add this question to a new bucket in the bucket model. Any further questions before I sum up? I've got a host of workshops coming up in Melbourne and also in Perth and Bunbury and Caratha. Uh, please just go to my website www.peterdew.com forward slash events, share with colleagues, share with friends, it's your word of mouth that helps me filled, fill these workshops. I've got, this is my second webinar for February already, I've got another webinar later on in February on how to build credibility as a speaker. Once again, you'll see those webinars on my website. Any further questions? So, in wrapping up, probably the key to being an effective Q&A person is to do as much preparation as you can. And that preparation is about anticipating what the questions are, it's about building a bank of questions. It's about knowing what you will and what you will not talking, talk about. It's about scanning the environment. So my take home message is, what are you going to do differently for your next Q&A session? How are you going to become more proficient, more effective, more polished at your Q&A so that not only do you present well, but you also nail your Q&A so people walk away and they think, wow, Peter really does know his topic. I look forward to speaking to you on the next webinar. Bye for now. Thank you and glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for your comments. Bye now.